Good morning, Calvary. Uh, it's Tuesday, and I'm Pastor Chad, and I'm here with your word for the day. We're in Mark chapter 11 today. Hey, uh, did you teach your kids to pray? Uh, I remember uh, those simple prayers from childhood, you know, like, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Uh, kind of a morbid prayer for kids, but, you know, it's, it's something that, that we teach them. Or, or how about this one? I remember being at a friend's house and they had a three-year-old and they said, oh, she knows how to pray now. And so she said, God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. And I was trying not to laugh out loud because it was so funny. I just wasn't expecting the, the syncopated prayer of a child. It was a beautiful thing, but it made me laugh. And uh, uh, we, we talk about prayer. We, we teach prayer, we practice praying, and prayer is probably one of the most misunderstood elements of the Christian life. And, and part of that is because there's so much teaching on it, and you can take things out of context. Here's what Jesus said in Mark 11, uh, beginning of verse 20. It says, And they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. This is the fig tree that Jesus cursed, if you look back a few verses earlier. Uh, and Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Now, uh, have you ever prayed for something and you didn't get it? Or you asked God to do something and he didn't do it the way you wanted him to do it? I, I know I have. I mean, I, there's lots of times I've asked mountains to move and they didn't move. I've, I've prayed for friends uh, who were sick and they died. I prayed for children to be healed and they weren't. Uh, I've prayed for... Uh, you know, my team to win football games and they didn't. You know, uh, we pray for things and we don't get them and we can blame ourselves because we say, oh, I guess I didn't believe enough. Uh, we, uh, there's whole churches that teach if you just believe enough and you name it, then God has to give it to you. And, and I don't believe that's the case. So uh, why can't we move mountains? Why can't we get our football teams to win? Why can't we change our spouse's heart through prayer? Why can't we alter elections? through prayer, um, because we pray without really understanding what prayer is all about. If you reflect back on the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6 is one of the places it's recorded. That's the classic place. Jesus taught us to pray, saying, um, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, that's the heart of praying. It's not getting the stuff we want because prayer is not some magical formula to make the world happen on your terms. It's not some you know, magical incantation that if you say it the right way and you believe it enough, you're going to get whatever you want. That is not what prayer is. Prayer is crawling into your father's lap and being held. Prayer is asking your dad to help you. Maybe with your homework, maybe with a project, maybe with a solution for life. Prayer is it's a conversation with your Savior about your victories and about your defeats and leaving that conversation with a changed perspective because you see things from God's vantage point. And prayer is inviting God to help you accomplish His will in this world not your will in this world. See, that, that's the toughest thing for us to hear. Prayer isn't about manipulating God to get what you want. Prayer is about you submitting to God to do what he wants. What he wants for you and what he wants in this world you to accomplish. It's really, it's agreeing with God that he's right and we're wrong and we're his servants. And when you come to God on those terms, it's amazing what he teaches you and how he changes you and how your perspective is altered in this world. So I'm going to encourage you to pray. I'm going to encourage you to pray uh, because it'll change everything. 
I'm going to encourage you to believe because if you believe that God is hearing you and cares for you and is working in this world, you're going to see miracles happen on a regular basis. We see miracles happen here at Calvary all the time and we rejoice in them, but we've come to expect them. We pray believing that God's going to work. And then I'm going to pray that you forgive. That you forgive because prayer, as I said before, is asking God to help you be obedient to do his will in this world. And did you notice how Jesus ended this passage? And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Remember when Jesus taught us in the Lord's Pray? And forgive us our debts as we forgive those who've sinned against us, who've trespassed against us, those who owe us. Forgive as we've been forgiven. Uh, see, that's part of it too. And when we forgive, then God will rejoice in our obedience and work in our lives in amazing ways. So I'm going to pray that you can do that, that you can pray, that you can believe, that you can forgive, and that you can live in the celebration of God's grace because he wants to have a conversation with you. God bless and have a great day talking with your God.